Welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at the DTM basics. The DTM basically stands for the digital terrain model. So you can't build uh, your roads in the sky, you need to build it on a piece of land. So you need to import that piece of land into the computer. Here you can see we've got a drawing and we also have the Excel file which contains the survey information. So let's have a look at this. If we start a new project, so I'm going to go to the startup drawing and I'm going to go to the settings so I just want to change the color of the background and you can see these all CAD lines that I've brought in for this drawing so this drawing normally comes from your town planner or from your land surveyor it'll be coordinated correctly um, I'm just going to save the file to my project so I've made a copy of that by going save as and I'm going to go to survey mode and I'm going to go to your file project settings and I'm going to create a new DTM file. So the DTM file is your database that stores your digital terrain model in. All these settings that you can see around here you need to get that information from the land surveyor, the person that did the survey. We won't be able to know that. Okay I'm going to be showing you the import from ASCII data. There's multiple ways you can even convert CAD lines into a DTM but it depends on what format's been given to you. So in this, this has been given to me in an Excel format or a comma delimited file and I'm going to go and name these points to name Y, X and Z. It's generally Y, X and then the Z. I'm going to import this and I'm going to store it into surface number one. So you can see I've brought in the points and now I just want to go and change my surface number one and give it a new name. I'm going to call this DTM surface one. And I'm going to call it natural ground levels or NGL and I'm going to make sure that just that layer is switched on. I'm then going to go and check if uh, the heights are all showing in the display and I'll save the work. Okay we need to triangulate because these are all just points sitting in space so we need to actually create uh, changes into a surface by putting break lines in between. So we're going to just triangulate the project and we'll put a maximum length depth uh, of 80 meters apart. But you're going to see in a moment that let's just change this color quickly to a color that actually sh stands out a bit. And you can see that the because we've triangulated it using the software, there are some parts of the road that aren't connected up properly, like you can see here. If you're going to commission the surveyor to survey, you'd normally they would normally do this for you. So you can go and clean up the survey just to match up all the points. That was the manual way of doing it. Now I'm going to show you then the, using the Intelli lines to do this for you. So here you can see I'm just cleaning it up manually. So I can use these Intelli lines and I'm just going to get the computer to link up all the ERs for me so that I don't have to go and clean it up manually. I'm going to create break lines and I will you, all the new lines as feature lines. So that's created solid lines between them that, that is seen as a feature line. A feature line basically means that if you go and re-triangulate again it won't go and delete those. We do cut, discuss that in greater depth in our um, online course that we offer. So I'm just going to clean up all the extra points that were created. I don't really want those. So you can practice with the, this data set that I put into that folder for you. I'm just going to clean it up, delete all those. So this is uh, this surface has got, uh, including the roads. That is because there's existing roads. But you might come to a Greensfield project where you haven't got any services on there. So um, if you do have services, you probably want the surveyor to survey it so that it comes into the model so that you are aware when you're designing where these services, like the roads and any underground pipes, stormwater channels, so that you can keep them in mind when you're building your infrastructure. Okay we want to generate the contours so I'm going to go to the display settings and I've generated the contours well you can see it's not generated yet it's grayed out so I need to quickly generate those contours let me generate them now and now because I've generated I can switch on the heights 
choose a spacing and now you've got a height coming onto the drawing. Okay, so any uh, proper package should have the ability to auto draft. So we use sheet files to create your layouts for you. So instead of drafting this all up with a title block, you can create company sheet files to automate the drafting for you. So I'm going to choose a scale and I need to now choose a viewport as well. So I'm going to press the add button and choose where this viewport needs to be. I'm going to rotate it, always rotate with north facing upwards. And um, we need to know where in the world it's going to be. So I'd like to add a grid setting. So I'll do a grid spacing and I'm going to use crosses. Okay, so now that we've got those crosshairs, we can just switch off your tables. Your setting our tables um, is for any infrastructure. And here you can see I've got my, so I'm just going to change my, set, switch the uh, text off so it's a little bit smaller. And uh, yeah, so here you've got your title block and everything's drafted for you. So that's all automated. I hope that helps.